It's break time. How are you today? I always pray that at the moment that this video finds you, you may all be in good health, happy and safe. Today is August 17, 2021, and our good news is coming from Matthew chapter 19 verses 23 to 30. And it says, Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For men it is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will be there for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourselves sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands, for the sake of my name, will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Today is Tuesday of the 20th week in the ordinary time, and our good news is Many who are first will be last, and last will be first. You know, when Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. This he said in reference to the young man who came to him and asked what must he do to acquire eternal life. When Jesus said, go and sell everything you owe and give it to the poor and give its proceeds to the poor and then come follow me, the young man went away sad because he had plenty of riches. That's why Jesus likened a rich man to a camel passing through a needle. It's easier for the camel to enter the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So this alarmed, alarmed his disciples. They asked Jesus, Lord, who then can be saved? And this was followed up by a discouraged statement. So they were alarmed 
and discouraged. They said, We have given up everything and followed you. What will be there for us? But Jesus reassured them by saying, For men, this is impossible, but for God, all things are possible. Friends, we all live in a culture where when we have given up something, it is always in exchange for something else. Be it in an exchange for money or as in a job, in exchange for something else as in a barter or swap, or even just a simple thank you will suffice. Sometimes we did not even receive, but sometimes we did not even receive anything in return, not even a thank you. And we, when we don't, we feel sad. We feel sad for the lack of gratitude. We are therefore inclined to brand those persons as rude. So, there is always within us, within ourselves, a built-in mindset that always demand something in return each time we let go of something that we have and have given it to someone else. Instinctively, we always wanted something in return. We always do. Even a simple thank you will suffice. And if we do receive it, oh, we're happy. But if we don't, it's easy to brand those people as rude. <laughs> Ingrate, all right? So this is the sentiment. This is the sentiment of the disciples when they said, We have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? But Jesus assured them, and even those, those who come after them. He said, Amen, I say to you that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourselves sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands for the sake of my name will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. But immediately, a warning was given. <laughs> he said, but many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Friends, it is but right and just that when we gave something, we can expect something in return. It's all right. Now, in this new age, the age of the Holy Spirit, when Jesus, the Son of God, has ascended up into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, the grace of God has been fully poured upon the church through her liturgical and sacramental life. Everything is given us. Everything is grace in the very life of His church. Therefore, the grace of God is up for grabs. Meaning, I mean, it is readily available to all without prejudice, without bias, no discrimination, and no partiality. Why? Because, God, because the availability of the grace of God all depends upon the generosity of God, not in any way upon the action of man. It is all available. It does not even depend upon the duration of one's service. Therefore, my friends, when we come to be of service to God, we must only focus on the generosity of God's love and mercy and nothing else. Now, do not ever think that it is too late 
too late for you to start serving God, for this is an attitude contrary to the generosity of God. Each time you come is just the right time. So, I am inviting each one of you to come into becoming active participants into the liturgical and sacramental life of the church and bathe in, bathe in the glory, the grace of God's love. It is readily available. Come and see. Come all and come now. The grace of God is upon us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit in the very sacramental and liturgical life of His Church. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Peace.